Hey everyone, Anthony Venuti here with InTouch Mortgage Solutions. It's Friday, Finance Fridays. And on this episode, we're gonna be talking about the Bank of Canada's policy rate decision and what it means for mortgage holders renewing their mortgage in the coming year and in the future. Stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this. If you're watching this video on the Team Sessa YouTube Real Estate channel, once again, thank you for your comments and thank you for clicking. Don't forget to leave those comments. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And if you want to book a free consultation to talk about what's on your mind with myself or Santo, you can do that in the description box below as well. But now back to the video. Earlier this week, we heard from the Bank of Canada around its policy rate decision and the release of the monetary report for the month of April. And on Wednesday, there was a press conference with Governor Tiff Mecklem, as well as Senior Deputy Governor uh, Carolyn Rogers. And I want to take an opportunity to go over the conversation points for that particular press conference, as well as talk about what it means for Canadians with mortgages, the real estate market, especially with higher mortgage costs, coming down the pipeline. So I wanna take an opportunity and just look at what happened on Wednesday. Obviously by now many Canadians are aware that the Bank of Canada held its policy rate steady at four and a half percent. This is the second consecutive increase that we've seen by the Bank of Canada. And obviously the Bank of Canada being one of the first major central banks uh, to actually hit that pause button. And there are some major points in the press conference and in the monetary report that require a little bit of attention. Obviously the Bank of Canada, the governor has indicated that in the event or if something catastrophic uh, potentially could happen, if we don't see the data points, those inflation numbers, economic growth, all these drivers uh, continue to be on the path that they would like to see things move in, while they will definitely be able to or willing to increase their policy rate in order to ensure that the monetary policy is working. We will be assessing economic developments and the effects of past interest rate increases relative to our inflation forecast. If monetary policy is not restrictive enough to get us all the way back to the 2% target, we are prepared to raise the policy rate further to get there. Now, speaking of policy, monetary policy that is working, well, obviously the inflation numbers from the expectations that we saw in January, uh, little has changed there. We're still uh, projecting that inflation will come down to 3% by the end of 2023 and back down to target of 2% by at least the end of 2024. Now, obviously, because this is aligned with what they're already projecting and that these numbers are starting to pan out, inflation is currently at 5.2%. And now we're awaiting the next leg of data coming out next week uh, in April. And that should help us see exactly where the Bank of Canada is headed. That's something that we should be paying close attention to as it can impact the bank's decision, the central bank's decision on June 7th. That's when the Bank of Canada will meet again. Now, obviously having this conversation, we see the inflation expectations coming down. We had a tight labor market. We have some economic growth, which is signaling to certain economists, depending on which side of the aisle you're on, that we could be basically avoiding a recession or that a recession is imminent. The question always remains is, and something that we've talked about on this channel, it feels like for an eternity, is when will the recession hit? If the recession will end up happening and how hard or severe will the recession be? We have some conversational points in the monetary report that I noticed, obviously looking at what we call credit swaps, how these financial instruments work between the US and Canada, obviously with what uh, unfolded just at the beginning of March with a lot of these US banks, uh, these regional banks collapsing, obviously this is having an impact on the financial system, not only abroad, but also here in Canada. And obviously this could lead to further credit tightening. Now, credit tightening is obviously uh, a concern because if Canadians can't get financing, if they can't get the loans, the mortgages that they need, well, obviously that could put the banks and Canadians and the real estate market potentially in a very delicate situation. But if we see the banks pull back on credit lending, while well, in turn, the Bank of Canada perceives this to be positive in some way, because that means that there's less access demand in the system. There's less money to be deployed into the economy. And we'll get into mortgages and the economy in just a moment, but I wanted to touch on obviously some of the conversation points that many maybe of you are thinking about. Obviously we heard from the 
uh, federal government about the budget 2023 and this massive spend that we are about to endeavor over the next few years. And it was a question that was addressed to the governor and he was diplomatic in the way he responded. But obviously we understand even from the IMF that any additional uh, you know, cost or a deficit that is going to be run in the government, well, it does have some bleed over effect in inflationary numbers, but not enough to concern the governor at this point. And obviously another point is for many of you that maybe are aware or not aware, while there's currently some labor negotiations happening with CRA employees and in the government, and they're asking for some wage increases. And obviously we understand from the Bank of Canada's perspective, something we've talked about, is that increase to wages is obviously problematic. Um, people that are working are able to spend. People that are earning more are making more or spending more, right? This is the major problem. So obviously we have some uh, polar uh, you know, headwinds here. We have some impacts on how spending, the economy, growth. We have obviously immigration numbers, keeping these job labor markets very, very tight. And obviously the Bank of Canada would love to see um, some of those unemployment numbers tick up a little bit to help ease those inflationary numbers. But I think we've talked, um, you know, generally about most of the, I think for me, at least personally, most of the major uh, topics within uh, the monetary policy report. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff to cover. Let us know in the comment sections below uh, what you were paying attention to or what you're thinking about when the Bank of Canada does these press conferences. But let's shift gears and talk a little bit more about uh, higher mortgage costs, as this was something that was brought up in the monetary report and the question that was posed by a member of the press to the governor and Deputy Governor uh, Carolyn Rogers ended up responding, and I'll clip to it right here. Hi, Governor. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, the NPR highlighted a high level of household debt with debt servicing costs up $133 billion, 45% from last year. Um, how worried are you about that if the downside risk does occur and a significant global uh, slowdown happens? Yeah. It's important to keep in mind when you look at those numbers that a big, uh, a big amount of that increase has occurred. The variable debt is the debt that reprices soon. Uh, as, as monetary policy takes effect. Um, what you are seeing and what you see in the, in the box in the NPR is that that effect sort of broadens out as uh, mortgages renew at, at higher rates. So um, that is monetary policy at work. We do need to see, as the governor said, that sort of dampening in demand to get the economy back in balance. Um, we have, though, for quite a while now, talked about high, high levels of household debt being a, a vulnerability, and it is something that, that we need to watch as the economy adjusts to higher interest rates. Uh, thanks for taking our questions. In a similar vein, just what's your general view on the housing market? And as you were speaking about before, you know, there are lots of Canadians who are going to be at a, at a low mortgage right now who are going to have to renew at a much higher rate. How much is that a concern for the bank? And certainly as, as, uh, as Canadians renew their mortgage, that, that, that effect spreads, as I just said. So, so it will have an effect on household disposable income. That'll bring down consumption, but that is, the, that is monetary policy sort of taking effect, bringing demand down in the economy and restoring that balance we need to get inflation back to target. So from the context of this question, obviously what the governor's trying to, or the deputy governor's trying to convey, and something that's very clear in the report, is that as Canadians have experienced higher mortgage costs, higher cost of borrowing, especially those Canadians who had variable rate mortgages, whether they would have been on the uh, trigger rate or the static payment type of mortgages or on the adjustable side where their payments would have changed automatically when the Bank of Canada increased their policy rates and therefore the lenders would have increased that prime. So those payments would have changed instantaneously uh, eight times over the last year. Some of them had to wait for a trigger rate, especially on those static payments. But more importantly, a lot of these Canadians already felt the pressure of these higher mortgage costs. And the Bank of Canada is signaling that as these continue to unwind, as monetary policies continue to stay elevated for longer, uh, something that the Bank of Canada is also pointing to, that we're going to potentially see higher policy rates, higher uh, cost of borrowing, for at least an extended period of time, right? So this is something that they've conveyed and we should be prepared for higher cost, uh, you know, in the future. Now, just to take a sidestep for a second, a lot of Canadians, a lot of market uh, movers, a lot of economists have uh, you started, to, started to look at maybe cuts you know, with the Bank of Canada. Will they cut rates at 2023 or in 2024? And it was interesting to see the governor of the Bank of Canada basically put these guys in their crosshairs 
and literally say to them, there's no anecdotal evidence, there's nothing here to signal to us that we need to cut rates. Uh, so basically kiboshing any of those hopes. And obviously uh, we understand that in life, in the economy, in the financial system, like we saw in March, a black swan event can occur. And obviously if nothing changes, if we don't see any of these cataclysmic events happen, well, that would force the Bank of Canada's hand uh, to sort of cut rates, well then we don't necessarily anticipate any rate cuts. And moving back to the mortgage end of it, right, we have to take into consideration that the US obviously in a position right now where inflation has come down for them as well. I believe now it's at 5%, which is definitely a positive sign, but the US Federal Reserve is not going to be cutting rates. They have signaled actually that they're gonna to continue to increase rates while here in Canada, while we're solar holding steady at 4.5%, or at least for an extended period. Now, the major uh, reason for that is, is when we look at mortgage indebtedness, we look at household spending. Canadians are heavily indebted. Something that we need to take into consideration, something that the Bank of Canada is also taking into consideration, and probably something that has helped sway their decision to keep policy rates level. So in the US, mortgages are generally, you know, fixed for 15 or 30 years, right? Unlike Canada, where most mortgages come up for renewal one to five years, right? So the risk, the uh, actual volatility of the Canadian landscape when it comes to mortgages is much more susceptible to interest rate fluctuations. So what the government, or sorry, the Bank of Canada is saying is that because of these higher rates, we're starting to see some pullback. We're starting to see household spending come off. We're starting to see less money in the system. It goes without saying that if Canadians who are renewing their mortgages, the 1.1 million Canadians, for example, that will be renewing their mortgages in 2023 are going to experience higher interest rates. Even if you're going from a fixed into another fixed or a variable into a fixed, it doesn't matter. Those rates are still elevated, which means more Canadians are going to have to fork out a little bit more money at the end of the month. And when it comes to disposable income, well, obviously it can hurt different Canadians uh, in a different way. Uh, less disposable income, less money left over at the end of the month to inject back into the economy means less money being injected, which means inflation should be coming down. But when we look at what they're saying, obviously the longer, the higher for longer interest rates, and we look at what the uh, Bank of Canada has prepared here as a graph, it gives us a little bit of an insight onto what Canadians are actually doing when it comes to their mortgage preferences right? What's happening with variable rate mortgage? What's happening with fixed rate? Well, obviously variable rate mortgages were a very popular product when interest rates were much lower and many Canadians opted for the variable rate mortgages based on those rates. But we've seen a steep decline in the new origination of those uh, variable rate mortgages as those costs are extremely elevated. We've also seen here, according to the Bank of Canada, a major drop in five-year fixed mortgages as more Canadians are opting for shorter term products. Something we've talked about on this channel multiple times and something we've discussed even in our previous episode where we were talking about the mortgage market update and what is happening with interest rates, right? One to two year products seem to be very popular. Three, four year products are also very popular as well. And it's all about getting the best interest rate. Now, obviously depending on your particular financial situation, and your goals when it comes to your mortgage and your home, well, selecting the right term and writing out that game plan can be very, very important. And betting on maybe one or two year products, which are obviously much more expensive than let's say a three or four year product, which are giving you a shorter term. Uh, you know, you may think that interest rates are gonna change in the next little while, but obviously we, as we've seen over the last little while, anything is possible. Now, I wanna just basically draw your attention um, you know, looking at the bond market, something we've also discussed is that these are how fixed rate mortgages are priced. And looking at what has happened recently in the bond market, we have seen a steep uh, decline from just a few months ago in those five-year fixed mortgages. So if you have a chance, you can watch our video on the mortgage market update uh, for the month of April, and you can see exactly uh, where the rates were compared to March. And obviously we can start to see that interest rates are coming down. Now, with that being said, there can be a little bit of relief for Canadians who may or may be in a variable rate mortgage right now. You're approaching that renewal window and you're thinking to yourself, well, do I stay in a variable? Do I lock into a fix? Do I take a shorter term mortgage? Well, we can see here from the Bank of Canada what many Canadians are thinking. 
What are your thoughts as a Canadian uh, with a mortgage? Is your mortgage coming up for renewal? What would you do if your mortgage was coming up for renewal in the next little while, especially in 2023? Would you opt for a shorter term mortgage? Would you take a three or four year? Would you take a five? Would you go variable? And obviously, are you rate sensitive? Are you looking at the higher expensive one and two year products? because you think that maybe, or we think that maybe interest rates are gonna come down, or is it a safer bet to take something a little bit longer, even though interest rates might be higher? Obviously the goal of this video is to talk about some of these mortgages, the higher cost as they are passed on to consumers. Obviously there is going to be an impact. Many Canadians renewing are going to feel those pressures. We'll leave the video here. If you like the content that we're producing uh, here on In Touch Mortgage Solutions on our Finance Fridays episodes, Feel free to you know, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And we'll leave the video here, wishing everyone a great Friday and an even better weekend ahead. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.